Well, jumping onto each other. There's Ellie's all over the place. This is a really nice big herd, and we're having the most wonderful time with them. They're all kind of spread out, and these two little ones that are going behind us seem to be the naughtiest of the group. They, like I say, have been jumping on top of one another. There's been lots of playing and pushing and shoving, which is the best time to be with elephants because I love when they spend their time doing that. It's always is highly entertaining to watch them as they go about their business and to watch the little ones play. So hopefully they will come back to where we can actually see them. At the moment they're just obscured by a bit of vegetation which goes hand in hand with being in the Mulawati. There we go. Look at that. You can see they're pushing each other. Isn't that cute? And the little one is not backing down at all. It's much smaller than its sibling. I would say probably maybe even half the age but it is not backing down at all it's in fact being the feistier of the two it's pushing and shoving and making sure that that other one has to think about what it's doing <laughs> this is cool elephants make me happy i must be honest especially when there's big herds like this these these singular best thing one how she just strips off that bark those leaves now interesting with that elephant if you have a look on her left tusk there you'll see that that left tusk is heavily notched it's got a very big groove on it and that's her feeding groove that's the one she's going to use to leverage leaves and all kinds of other things but she's actually was using her right tusk which is quite strange generally they favor one tusk and they'll use it more and more and more and that's why it gets that groove in it but for some reason she used her right tusk there just now maybe it was just the angle of the branch it was easier with the right tusk than the left but it's quite a nice example of just how much they use a certain side of their body and the damage that that can do to hard hard ivory that they have I'm laughing to myself because just above me here, on the bank on our right hand side, so... How is that? is that now you can hear look there's a ruckus in amongst the herd I'm sure it's the males that are causing a bit of problems and that's why look the females are my alert everyone is talking to each other there's a massive amounts of communication that are happening that is the best sound Seb did you get goosebumps like I did I'm super. Now I'm just keeping quiet because it's worth listening to. Wow got to be the best thing in the whole world like I was saying Seb and I have both got goosebumps from just listening in amongst this herd and they're all vocalizing and grumbling and you can almost feel the vibrations it's really quite special to be a part of something like this and I was saying that just now I was kind of laughing to myself because there's actually an elephant just above me over here so on top of this little ridge and all I saw was a little trunk coming out of the tree so that elephant is sitting somewhere on the top there and is just sneaking up on us you can see every now and then a branch move it's quite something to see an elephant that high above you and Seb was actually saying I hope it doesn't jump on us because well it wouldn't be a very good thing if they jumped on us but it was definitely probably males that have caused all of this now hopefully the herd won't move off too much and that they'll start coming back like they were I might just reposition ourselves slightly just so we can actually see them again because they have moved a little bit Nori you say that was why it was wild 
Well, Laurie, it's about as good as it gets when it comes to being able to hear an elephant. We got absolutely spoiled there. Generally, those vocalizations are very short-lived. You don't hear it for long periods, but that just went on and on and on and was very special. So we got absolutely treated there by these Ellies. And like I say, one of the best sounds in the world is got to be sitting amongst them. And they're still going. Mm -hmm. I wonder why there's a, someone is so upset. It's in the background that they are making a lot of noise. So they, I can see quite a few Ellies far away. That's one of the Ellies that is close by. And there's some Ellies that are right in the distance. And they're the ones that are making all the noise. So I think there's a big bull inside there. I was saying earlier that I saw a big bull walking around. So I wonder if he's not in amongst the females chasing a female that might be an estrus. And that's what caused everybody to get a little bit excited. But it wasn't it incredible how all of the elephants stopped feeding? The females all lifted their heads, opened their ears, and they were listening and checking to make sure that there wasn't something dangerous like lions or something like that that they had to worry about. Once they kind of got the communications through, they then all stopped and carried on feeding and knew that it wasn't something to worry about too much. Dynamic. Well, I agree, Peyton. It's just something that can't be described. It's, it's incredible to sit here and listen to that. The sheer l sound that comes out of these animals, and like I say, it almost feels like it's vibrating in you when they're this close and they're calling. And I must be honest, being a little bit lower than them is almost amplifying it. Because we're in the Mulawati, it seems as though that sound is being trapped and kind of bouncing back and echoing at us. It is the most amazing experience ever. And hopefully it won't stop. Hopefully we'll hear some more vocalizing just now and that they'll all come out a little bit more and be back to where they were a little earlier and we'll be able to see the whole herd again. Fasha, you want to know what attracts the elephants to the vegetation in the Mulawati. Well, it's not so much attracting them to the vegetation in the Mulawati. They will have been attracted here because it's been a warm day and there's lots of shade. So you can see lots of big trees here, which provides the perfect shady area. That coupled with the fact that they can dig for water here, they can get nice clean water as opposed to this dirty water where multiple animals have wallowed and defecated and urinated in. It makes it an attractive option for them to spend time. The second part of that is that they just, there's all the spin-off of being down here and getting shade and, and a place to possibly get water, is that there is vegetation that grows on the banks. And most of the time, this vegetation is lush and full of water and nutrients because these trees that grow along this area, most of them will have tap roots, which means that they go quite deep and they'll get into the water source that is below us in this riverbed and they'll be sucking up that water and making sure that they're absorbing lots and lots of that water and that will then make the leaves much more tasty and better for the elephants to eat and that's why they come down here so it is more that the river system is what is attracting them rather than the plants themselves that are here look at the little one is almost too small to fit in the grass there <laughs> Look at that little one. The grass is taller than you are. And are you fighting with the tree? Don't fight with the tree. Look at the... <laughs> There's just a branch being thrown around all over the place. Now while we watch our playful little Ellie, Tara is sitting with another sweet little being in the form of Intimla.